Hello, everybody. We will just give uh, a couple seconds for everybody to get hooked up to their audio and then we will start. Oh, can you see the big screen there, Scarlett? I can. Yeah. It's not funny. It's just this thing. It's just. Yeah. All right. Welcome, everybody to our Expedia Cruises World Explorer event. This is the final day of our three-day event, providing presentations from a variety of different preferred cruise and land suppliers. For this presentation, everyone is muted. You do have control if you want your video on or off. If you have questions, please use the chat feature. We will have moderators answering them during the presentation and then we'll answer a few of the questions at the end of the pre presentation if there are any. And then um, always reach out to your consultant if your question doesn't get answered and we will make sure they are answered directly. So my name is Scarlett Hiller. I am one of the franchise partners for Expedia Cruises. Our annual World Explorer event is being hosted by the six, cruises, six Expedia Cruises location in the Edmonton area as well as our location in West Vancouver. We are coming up to 19 months of the date the travel shut down. If you are on this call, you love to travel and want to start exploring the world again. Travel fulfills us, that is why we do it. And if you are like me, you are missing it. The good news is that cruising has begun. Cruise ships started to sail this past June, we have now had four months of ocean cruise sailings in Alaska, the Caribbean and Europe. And in July, river cruising also started sailing in Europe. Cruises are off operating safely with the highest health protocols and cruising is by far the safest way to travel. At the end of, end of this September, we will have 50% of cruise ship fleets back sailing. So that's fantastic. At Expedia Cruises, we have had passengers sail recently and they came back with raving reviews. They were thrilled to get back on board and have the wonderful experience that only a cruise can provide. I will say that travel is a little bit more complicated at this time. Now more than ever, the use of a professional ad advisor is needed. Our consultants are here to help you navigate these new complexities of travel and make sure your vacation is safe and seamless. What you will receive when you book with Expedia travel with a travel advisor is the following, expertise. With hundreds of different cruise ships and lines, our travel advisors can help you find the right cruise for you. Pricing, you will never pay less booking directly with the cruise line. Many times booking with a travel agent will provide a better price. And then there's extras. Booking with Expedia Cruises, we block group space on hundreds of sailings and can offer you better pricing and amenities such as shipboard credits that booking direct with the cruise lines you will not receive. Information regarding passports, visas, entry expert requirements, COVID tests, vaccination protocols, we have that information. Assistance in emergencies or when problems occur, we are here to help. The ability to have your entire vacation planned and monitored by one person is especially uh, beneficial. If you are ready to travel now, we are ready to help. We, we believe the time is now. We know that for some of you, the time is not right to travel at this moment. But the time is now to start planning for 2022, 2023 and beyond. Studies have shown that approximately 40% of the pleasure of a trip comes from planning one. There is a great deal of pent up demand for travel and we have three seasons of destinations postponed. Tours and cruises are filling up and in many cases, space is limited. The last year has been very challenging and sometimes what makes me smile is the thought of where I can go next. Our bucket lists have now become the to-do list. I can't wait to start traveling again. 
Whatever your dreams are, our Expedia Cruises travel advisors can help you make them come true. At Expedia Cruises, we are committed to finding you the best value for your travel dollars, and we are more than just cruises. Our name is Expedia Cruises Air, Land, and Sea Vacations. We can help you plan all of the components in your vacation. Best of all, we are in your neighbor neighborhood so you can shop local. So now sit back, relax, and start exploring the world and dreaming of your next vacation. I'd like to introduce Kathy Denroche from Oceana Cruises, and she will be highlighting everything Oceana has to offer, along with um, highlighting Europe as a destination. So welcome, Kathy. Thank you so much, Scarlett, and thank you so much, everybody. It's so wonderful for you all to be here uh, with us, and we're so thrilled to have you. Do you know, I've been around for a very, very long time in the cruise industry. In fact, I started in 1975 with the Love Boat, and it's been a very exciting adventure. But I, have, I want to talk to you tonight because in 20 minutes, it's very difficult to get everything you want to hear about your cruise line, and you're going to hear from three spectacular cruise lines tonight. So I hope that uh, you're sitting in your chair, you have a nice glass of wine or a cup of coffee or something. Something and you're just ready to hear about some of these beautiful smaller uh, experiences that you can have. Well, I have to say, I've been with Oceana for 12 years now, and I love this little product because I was with Crystal for 18 years before Oceana, but Oceana came into being all, almost 18 years ago now, and they carved this niche in the middle between the premium, these big, beautiful ships in the premium market, and these small six-star ships in the luxury market. And so we started a whole new niche called the upper premium market and three things set us apart that are so incredible i mean if you you'll hear from so many different cruise lines over the last two days the entire group of Expedia here has brought to you some really great products. But I have to say what, what made Oceana so incredibly special 18 years ago is we set out to be different from anybody else. And the fact that we had number one, the only reason anyone came to us in the first start of it, and actually the only reason people still do come to us at this moment for the very first time is because we have some of the most incredible travel experiences ever. And we go all over the world in seven days up to 180 days. And I'm just to share with you about Europe tonight. But the reason we do, we have very port intensive itineraries because we do them on small ships and our fleet is incredibly small. We have six ships and just about to launch a seventh one in April of 23. So, you know, from 680 guests to 1200 guests, that's a limit on each of our ships. So it means that we can get into ports that the big ships can't get into. And the third pillar we sit on is we are officially known as the cruise line for foodies. So it's not what makes you buy a holiday every or a vacation on a ship, but it's will what will make or break your trip. And it doesn't mean it's just about this gourmet luxury food. It's about the choice you have as a guest. So Oceana started out incredibly differently. We started out with these beautiful small ships that were 30,000 tons. It meant that if you don't know that kind of size, compared to the big, beautiful ships that you see with Princess and Celebrity and Hall in America, that today three of my little ships could fit onto one of the big ships. So it's the choices we have as consumers that I love with cruising now. And the fact is, is that we're seeing a trend in the industry, the whole industry is seeing a trend for people to come on to a little bit smaller, a little bit more attention to detail, and also go for longer. They couldn't travel in 2020, so they decided, and really not in 2021 either, except for this next little month or two that's left in the year, but they decided they want longer voyages. And so we're seeing guests of ours come for 30 and 40 and 60 days. And so with our fleet, we have six beautiful ships. And as I say, about to have a seventh. And this is the regatta class. These are beautiful little tiny ships of 30,000 tons that were all uh, re-inspired, taken right down to the gutters, uh, basically over the last few years. And Oceana's great, I think, foresight of knowing that we have these gorgeous ships. They needed to be a little bit updated. They were already absolutely beautiful, but we decided that we wanted to make them into these beautiful little elegant homes away from sea. We have fireplaces on our ship and they're just beautiful. And so with the Oceana class, when I came over to Oceana 12 years ago, here we had the Marina and the Riviera. This was a ship size I was used to selling over at Crystal, but I have to say this was kind of 1,200 guests, twice the size of our small ships, but it was twice the size in the fact that we had more dining rooms. We had 
uh, you know, bigger staterooms, things like that. And so every one of those two ships have been also re-inspired all during the pandemic. So it's been wonderful. And just a couple of weeks ago, we announced our Vista class, our new Allura uh, uh, class, which the ship is called Vista, and it's one of two ships coming out in April of 23. And she is just the, one of the most beautiful ships I have ever seen. So when I tell you about Oceana, some of the things that were very different about us is that we said, we're not going to have art auctions at sea. We're going to have original artworks up to $7 million on each of our ships that people can take an audio box tour and see, you know, live Picasso, they'll have choices in dining rooms. And we're not going to charge people to dine in our dining rooms they are going to be complimentary. We're going to include shuttles when we come through different cities and around the world. So we started to think that we were going to be a cruise line that included the important things to travelers. So it wasn't all inclusive, because we didn't want to be like that. But we wanted to be more inclusive than the big premier cruise lines. And that was something that created this niche called the upper premium, a little bit more attention to detail, smaller, but the fact is you had it your world, your way. That's our slogan. That's our motto in life is we want people to have choices. So even when I tell you about the new Allura class and I think, gee, this is even veranda staterooms that are private, you know, solo staterooms. These are things we've thought of over the years and we've got a very beautiful residential feel. When you come on board Oceana, our guests come back and they say, you know, it was just the most exquisite experience. Your hardware is so beautiful and everything, every detail on the ship, all the, you know, um, amenities, everything are so incredible. But the fact is without your people that work for you, it is that just makes it a 10 out of 10. And it's one thing I've heard over the years is people love it. So I was telling you a little bit about some of the things we include. And again, usually I take about 45 minutes to talk, but I really only have 20 minutes and I do want to get to our itineraries for you. But things that we include are things that again, are important to travelers. We don't want to charge you for lattes or London fogs or soft drinks or anything. So those are always included. We also have our, you know, fitness classes, our Pilates, our yoga, every, every one of our guests can use our spa facility. And the only place, well, the only thing we charge for there is a, whether it's a massage or a, you know, a facial or whatever you're doing, the service is there, but we teach classes and we don't charge for anything like that. We decided that we would have open dining restaurants we got rid of uh, formal nights we got rid of two seatings we said we're going to be casual we're going to be a nice casual but we are going to also offer 24-hour room service things that again would be something considered to people just something out of the you know as as expected but in the luxury market it's what is expected and that's what i love about it and so on our little ships we have four dining rooms three of them take reservations uh, they're complimentary, but we take reservations because we're small. We only have 680 guests on. Uh, in our Oceana Marina and Riviera, we have six restaurants, four of which are reservations. And on the Vista, there's going to be 12 dining rooms that you can choose from. So it's exciting. So you get a tiny bit of a feel for Oceana, what it's like in these exquisite ships. But then all of a sudden it comes to, well, what about big entertainment? Well, we are an edutainment kind of uh, cruise line with entertainment involved. So we have this beautiful old life enrichment, what I call it, the edutainment. Our guests are very curious people. They want to know what's going on. So every cruise, we have enrichment speakers. So up to five speakers and TED-like talks and things like that plus an artist loft so if you want to have a bit of culture whether you want to learn how to paint or draw or whatever that you can also do that so we also have great entertainment we have a show every night we have music on the ships we have live music and live bands and all sorts of things for you to keep your attention just absolutely at its peak but at the same time, we also decided we wanted to be a cruise line that was full of curated travel experiences. And with that came a lot of enrichment. So I get the beautiful pleasure tonight to talk about Europe. We do go all over the world from right around Australia, Africa, South America, everywhere you can imagine, right up to the top of Svalbard, that little gray blob at the, the top of your screen there. But what I love about Oceana is that when we do a cruise, we're very port intensive, unique, adventurous itineraries. So I wanted to show you a few of our European itineraries tonight because we actually have like 
10 and 12 day cruises in Europe. And but we actually build our cruises so they can be added with a back to back to back cruise. And I used to always say to the gang here at Expedia, why even go home? Just keep on board the ship. It's a fantastic experience. So when I show you this 14 day cruise from Lisbon to Venice, one of the things I love about it is it is very intensive. And you'll see that as you go along, you hardly have a day at sea. In fact, every European cruise of ours has only one day at sea. The rest is in port early and you leave late at night. We do Greek Isles. Our Canadian guests want to do France, Greece, and Italy. They never ask for Spain, but they're starting to ask big time for Greece and Holy Land. So we've got a Greek Isle cruise. We've got Holy Land. And see, this is just one itinerary on one ship. But because of our time restraint tonight, we have almost 16 different Holy Land cruises that start as well in Jerusalem. I'm going to show you a little bit about that. So they're gorgeous itineraries, and they're just incredibly um, built to be back to back. And this is an example I want to give you. Imagine this cruise from Rome to London. Now at Oceana, we include your air, your tax, your cruise. Out of Calgary, out of Edmonton, we charge a $250 air add-on Canadian to your or fair and we fly you either from Edmonton or Calgary right to Rome and home from London and that happens on every one of our cruises so we already start out as almost an inclusive cruise line just with air cruise tax so look at this itinerary so here we are we're flying from Edmonton to Rome I might want to talk to my Expedia person about extending my stay which is inexpensive to do and then maybe coming straight back or extending it on the end too. But when you look at these two cruises, one of the great things is, is we include Spain. And Spain is the less, you know, kind of road traveled, I always like to say, but it's one of the most beautiful countries um, that you could see. And Spain across with Portugal, I've done this cruise. It's a real foodie cruise. It's a beautiful cruise when you think of coming into San Malo, which is where our Jacques Cartier started from. There's a big statue of him. And of course, he was an explorer that came to find Newfoundland and then into Bordeaux to see the chateaus or have picnics or into Bilbao to see the Guggenheim Museum and all the way around La Coruña, which is a UNESCO heritage uh, city. It's absolutely amazingly beautiful. And then into Portugal to have a little bit of port wine and then down to Cadiz where Christopher Columbus started out and into Seville, seeing maybe, uh, you know, some one of the some of the most beautiful museums and then down into as far as, you know, Tangier and Malaga and ending up in Barcelona. So we do this in reverse as well. It's a beautiful, beautiful itinerary. If you've never thought of it, maybe try and think about that. From London to New York, 18 days. This is a cruise that starts in Europe, comes right up into the British Isles, and then heads over to our very own St. John's, Newfoundland, and then into St. Pierre and Miquelon, and then over to St. John, New Brunswick, and all the way down through to New York. Stunning. So we have ships that carry from Europe over to the Americas, we go from ships that come from Europe all the way down to South America when we're when we're kind of making a, a, a change to move to a different region in the world because we only have six ships in our fleet and they're small, we come in the peak seasons. Then I look at this and I go, okay, now we've got the Baltic. We come into St. Petersburg and you know what's really cool about Oceania, everybody, is we actually literally stop and dock right in front of the Hermitage for three full days. So a beautiful itinerary of 10 days. We come in in peak seasons, like I mentioned. So the White Nights Festival, this is one of the biggest festivals in Russia with thousands upon thousands of light festivals and everything there. So we come in between June and July when this festival is on. You you might decide you want to do a private evening excursion into the Hermitage. You might say, I want to do a culinary tour and I want to just have caviar and vodka and things like that. So we take groups of 14 and 16 guests. And so that's the Baltic. And we add those into some of the things like the fjords of Norway. This is one of our most beautiful treasured sailings going all the way up through the Norwegian fjords. And it's one of my very favorite. The sun does not go down for 18 days. This is the land of the midnight sun. And so this is a cruise that has the Baltic and 
the fjords of Norway in it. So see what I mean about being able to tie in different cruises together. And so we go into these beautiful little ports and with our small little tours of 14 or 16 guests, there's so many different kinds of things you can do. This is one of my new favorites for 2023. Of course, in 2022, we also have Europe and that is really selling well. In fact, you're gonna hear tonight that so much of 2022 is already sold out for guests. So I wanna continue to make sure you talk to your uh, consultant over at Expedia and have them look at the availability. And don't worry if you have to wait list or anything, things are gonna change. Things are always changing all the time. But this is one of the great things about looking forward into 2023 when the world's back to kind of a beautiful normal again, is from London to Reykjavik up into Iceland and over to the Faroe Islands with Runavik and things like that. So I love these Northern itineraries. With Jerusalem, I was mentioning uh, you know, kind of a beautiful Holy Land cruise, but this is into the old Tel Aviv, the Jaffa, uh, through the eyes of the locals. So we take you through there into Cyprus, into some of these gorgeous, gorgeous itineraries. And even on some of these Spanish cruises, we take you on part of the El Camino into the old St. James Pass. So you get a chance to hike or walk. So we have something for everybody. When it comes to very intensive, whether it's coming into the Holy Land or going into anywhere, you can do any kind of back-to-back -back sailings. The secret is it's a small ship taking you into places that the big ships can't get into. So when you see places like Cinque Terre, we come into Dubrovnik and things like that, it's fantastic. Now, very quickly, I just want to tell you this itinerary. This is in 2022. So just as an example of a short excursion, we come into Marseille. We take 16 or 18 people off into someone's private 112 acre ranch we do black truffle hunting with their dogs and then come back to their house for lunch or maybe you are a person that wants to see castles built on top of caves and that's the Pistonia castle in Kapor Slovenia so the value is really there I could talk because we're in Europe for seven months of the year it's so incredible but the things that are included are the things that are important and I want you to talk to your Expedia person about it and with that not only the air the tax the cruise we added in a group of short excursions you could take or a beverage package, meaning, you know, wine and beer at lunch or dinner or for $20 a day, you can up that to a premium package of full premium liquor or shipboard credit. So it's your world the way you want it. You don't have to have it all inclusive, but you, you always have a choice of what you want included. And this is what we call our O life. And that's in addition to every single cruise we do, you have that choice of what you'd like. So this is the great part of it. I just want to say, take a look at Oceana. It's an amazing cruise. We've got lots of prepaid gratuities through Expedia. You've got a wine bundle if you offer, if you book anything in the next, you know, two weeks. The girls, every the guys, the whole team at Expedia can tell you all about it. And wellness and health, all you have to do is go to the bottom of our webpage. Cruising is incredibly safe. As Scarlett said, it is the most safe of all the entities to cruise on. So remember what you love about travel. I'm going to stop sharing now, but I hope that you'll come to join us in Scarlet. I'll hand it back over to you. Thank you so much, Kathy. Great presentation. Not long uh, enough. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of information to cover in your short window of time. Um, you're getting off easy. There aren't any questions, but I want to thank Sarah for her comment. She said she loves the food and education on board. Oceanic. Oh, that's so nice, Sarah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, it is an amazing little cruise line. You know, I think at, in my mid 60s here, I found this beautiful home uh, to and, and people just come over to Oceana and they love it. So if you've been on a big ship and you want something a little bit smaller, or you come from a luxury line, and you just want a itinerary that's going to blow your socks off, that's what it is. So thank you so much. And and uh, everybody, and I hope you have a wonderful next uh, session uh, with Silver Sea. So I'll leave you to it. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Kathy. No problem. So, Come and join our family. <laughs> so travel is starting again. The time is now to start thinking about what, where you want to go in 2022, like Kathy said, and even into 23 and beyond. The cruise lines and tour operators have flexible booking policies and there is no risk for in your investment. We have lost two years of vacations and with the high demand, we are already seeing some shortage of space. 
Thank you for joining us on this session. Um, and we will start very shortly on the next uh, presenter, which will be uh, Silver Sea Cruises. So in the meantime, I think we might do a few uh, poll questions. So there's the first one. So what have you been filling your time with during the pandemic? Some of you took up a hobby, um, home and garden network project, which is great. Became obsessed with pub puzzles, binge Netflix. And the winner is spent hours online researching future travel destinations. That is fantastic. That was a 52% um, and that's what we like to hear. The next question, what is your favorite vacation beverage? Beer, wine, martini, margarita, soda, or one of everything? I'd have to agree with the one of everything. So yes, the winner is one of everything. And a short second is, or not far behind is wine. Our next question, if you were to try on your vacation clothes today, what, how would they fit? Are they pretty roomy? They feel wonderful. They are a little snug or damn COVID. Oh, they are feeling wonderful. That's great. So you didn't overindulge during COVID. So now is a great time for um, you to take a few minutes to, uh, to grab a re refreshment. Uh, please re reach out to your Expedia Cruise Travel Consultant if you have any questions or you want us to help you start planning your next vacation. Uh, just a reminder, make sure that you follow us on Facebook. Remember to check out our the new YouTube channels uh, where these uh, video presentations will be posted. So each center has their own uh, YouTube channel. Um, and like I said, we will be starting the next presentation in the next uh, minute or so. Here's a poll question. How many cruises have you sailed on? We've been running this poll for the last few, few days and I'm amazed on how many cruisers we have on, online. And again, the, the poll with the 20 plus cruises has won every single time. We have some fantastic and avid cruisers um, on the call with us today. So that's great. When was your last trip out of Canada? Two thousand and nineteen seems to be the obvious winner. Two full years for many of us since we've left Canada. And I'm sure a lot of other people left in early, early two thousand and twenty. Who do you want to travel with, with on your next trip? Is it by yourself, with your partner that you've spent many, many hours with at home? Is it with your extended family and friends? Or a mixture of all, all of the, would be another option. 
So most people said travel with my partner, which is fantastic. All right. I'm not sure if Carl is on the line. Yes, all right, perfect. So we are gonna get started here. Um, welcome to our Expedi Cruises World Explorer event. Again, um, like I mentioned before, this is our final day of our three-day event. Uh, for everybody that is new to the call, uh, everybody's in muted. Um, and we suggest if you have any questions to use the chat feature um, to, type in those questions. We will have a moderator that will answer any questions or we'll answer them at the end. Um, and always, if your question doesn't get answered, please reach out to your travel consultant and they will be able to answer all of those questions. So just uh, again, my name is Scarlett Hiller. I'm the franchise, one of the franchise partners for um, or at Expedia Cruises. Um, our annual World Explorer event um, is hosted by six Expedia Cruise locations in Edmonton, and then of course the location in West Vancouver. Uh, we are coming up 19 months of uh, where travel has been shut down. The good news is that cruising has begun. Uh, cruise ships have started to sail in uh, since June. Uh, we now have four months of ocean cruises that have happened in Alaska, Caribbean, and Europe. And then river cruising has started up as well um, this summer. Cruises are operating safely with the highest health protocols and cruising is by far the safest way to travel. Um, right now we're almost at 50 or past 50% capacity of cruises back in the water since the initial shutdown. Um, we have had many customers that have booked through Expedia Cruises that have sailed and we are getting rave reviews on their cruise experience in this new, new world, so which is fantastic. Um, I just wanna reiterate uh, why you wanna use a travel advisor with Expedia Cruises. So we offer expert, expertise with hundreds of different cruise ships and lines and our travel advisors can help you find the right cruise for you. Pricing, pricing you will never pay less booking direct with cruise lines. And that is such an important point. Many times booking with a travel agent will provide you better prices. Plus they can get extra amenities. Booking with Expedia Cruises, we block group space on, a hun on hundreds of sailings and, you and can offer you better pricing and amenities such as shipboard credits compared to booking direct. Um, it is so important that you get all of the information you need to travel now. So we provide that information regarding passports, your visas, entry re requirements, COVID testing and vaccination protocols. And then we are always here to assist you in emergencies when problems occur, we are here to help. The, and then finally, the ability to have your entire vacation package planned and monitored by one person. So um, if you are ready to travel, we are ready to help. I, we all believe at Expedia Cruises, the time is now. The time is now to, um, to plan. The time is now to, uh, to plan for those vacations 2022, 23 and beyond. Um, and even, and for those people that are interested in traveling now, we are here to help, to guide you. Um, the last year has been challenging and sometimes what makes us smile is the thought of where we can go next. So uh, whatever your dreams are, our Expedia Cruise Consultants can help you make that come true. At Exp Expedia Cruises, we are here and committed to finding you the best value for your travel dollars. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our next presenter. And that is Carl uh, Kanstatter, who is the Director of Expedition Sales for, from Silver Seas Cruises. So welcome, Carl. 
we thank look you very much Scarlett. Your, you're welcome okay uh well thanks very much and, and thank you everyone for being here and for taking the time out during your evenings uh, to listen to all of us talk about the things that we are most passionate about. And we love working with Expedia Cruise Ship Centers and um, just trying to spread the joy of travel. And, and I'm so happy because I was really fortunate to have been in the Galapagos about three weeks ago. I've been home for just under two, I suppose. And um, we are sailing again and the world is reopening. And it's such a pleasure to know that that is happening. Um, so yeah, there I am at, uh, with the giant tortoises at one of the research centers on San Cristobal Island um, just a couple of weeks ago. There was a question about testing, and, and that's what's making all of this possible. The, I, the, the concept of being able to go back and go test uh, traveling right now is we're trying to make it as safe or safer than it would be to walk down Main Street in your hometown. And we have, Silver Sea has operated since mid-June, about 45, 46 cruises, and we've moved over 12,000 guests in that time. And we have had a couple of cases where we've caught people, or I don't mean caught, but we've caught uh, COVID uh, prior to people embarking. And there were three or four cases where people presented with symptoms. We put them in the isolation suites and it was all handled perfectly well. And they were escorted off the ship and then we assisted them in getting home. So it's, you know, out of 12,000 to have about eight. And again, four of them didn't even make it onto the ship because of the screening processes. It really means that we're doing something uh, very, very well and it's working. So it is time to get back out there and it's it's time to start cruising again. Silver Sea, uh, our ships are really quite small and that's what affords us the opportunity to go to over 900 different destinations. Uh, this is twice as many as anybody else. And, uh, you know, some of these destinations are so far flung, places that many people haven't heard of. You know, the Kimberley Coast off the northwest coast of Australia. Uh, we're going to the Russian Far East, so across the Bering from Alaska. We're going to Antarctica. We're going to the Arctic. We're going to the Galapagos, the west coast of Africa. Pretty much anywhere water touches land, that's what we're doing. Uh, a northeast passage, so over the top of Russia, a northwest passage over the top of Canada um, and literally everywhere in between. So today we're going to talk a little bit about Galapagos and Antarctica uh, in detail after uh, I'll tell you a little bit more. What getting into those destinations means with these small ships, and Kathy touched on this, it's getting to places where the larger ships can't go. And so when it's an expedition, the ship becomes a platform from which we go and explore these areas. And even on the classic side of things, you can see this image on the right hand side, we're sailing under the Tower Bridge of London. There are two cruise lines in the world that can do this. And we're sailing under the Tower Bridge of London. So when our itinerary says London, there isn't a bracket beside London that says Southampton or Greenwich or Dover, we mean London. You're sailing up the Thames, tying up beside the HMS Belfast and you're downtown. So we really mean it when we say that we're taking it to places that the other ships can't go. Our largest ship in terms of guest capacity is 608 people. So when you compare that to some of the ships that are out there these days, you can understand why we're getting into ports that the 4,000 and the 5,000 and the 6,000 passenger ships cannot get to. And there's nothing wrong with those. It's just a different style of traveling. Our smallest ship, was the one I was just on in the Galapagos at 100 guests. So those are some pretty small ships when you consider what's happening out there. They're intimate small ships, but everything is sweet accommodation. So the, the, all of the suites uh, are suites. There's no, there are no inside cabins. Everything is a suite, everything is exterior, and about 80% of our suites are veranda suites. Superior service, every suite category, from the bottom to the top comes with butler service included, gratuities included, Wi-Fi included. We're truly all inclusive to the extent now that we're including limo service from home to the airport, your international airfare, all the transfers. If there's a pre-hotel needed because of the flight schedule, that's included. Shore excursions starting next spring are included. As I mentioned, butler service and gratuities, premium beverages, et cetera. 
uh, getting you home with that international air, and then the limo transfer back home. And when we're talking about expedition, everything I'm going to be talking about in the Galapagos and Antarctica, all the enrichment lectures, the flights that we need domestically, the expedition team, when we get off the ship by Zodiac, when we step foot on Antarctica, the cold weather parka, all of those things are included as well. So truly all inclusive when you consider that a limo is coming to your door to pick you up at the beginning of this. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about expedition. And this again provides all of these incredible means to discover because these ships are taking you to places, we talked about small ports, but in the case of expedition, the ships are taking you to places that you cannot get to on your own. It's impossible. So we take these small ships and again, use them as a platform from which to go and explore either by Zodiac or on foot, sea kayak, and the expedition team, these are the experts. These are the, the historians, the geologists, the marine biologists, um, ornithologists. They're bringing it to life. They're giving your lectures. These are truly uh, enrichment voyages because the, the expedition team are there describing things along the way. And these are folks with um, undergraduate degrees, graduate degrees, they've written books, they've had books written about them. One of our expedition leaders is a woman who was the very first woman to scuba dive in Antarctica in 1988. Who do you want to take, uh, who do you want having take you to Antarctica? Somebody like that who's been, you know, over a hundred times and was scuba diving there in the 80s. So our expedition fleet is made up of these four vessels, ranging in capacity from a hundred guests to 274. So again, these are really small vessels. So what do I mean by expedition cruising? Well, I'll tell you what it's not. It's not this. And these folks are not on expedition. And there's nothing wrong with that. Typically, when people are starting out, they're younger. They have younger families. They may not have as much disposable income. They may not have as much vacation time. And a cruise ship that is the destination, those ships with wave pools and zip lines and go-karts, the ship is the destination. That's wonderful. But as we get older and more established in our careers and we've got a little bit more disposable income, we decide that we wanna travel with fewer people. A smaller ship with fewer people and more amenities and more comfort. Why do we move from economy class to premium economy airfare or from premium to business? Because there's more space it's more comfortable, there's more choice. That's why we do it. So similarly with expedition, and again, expedition, then those ships are the platform from which we go and explore these incredible parts of the world. So now let's talk about the Galapagos a little bit more. Two different itineraries, they can be done back to back. Each one is seven days, so when you combine them, it's 14 days. You will never visit the same site twice. You might visit the same island, but you'll be visiting different sites on the same island. So these two itineraries, very comprehensive if you do them back to back. Most people do them, do one, and it's a Saturday to Saturday cruise. We start in Quito. So your international, your, the limo picks you up at your door. International Air takes you to Quito, Ecuador. We spend two nights there and then fly over to the islands, your internal flights, your domestic flights are included, and then seven nights aboard our brand new ship in the Galapagos. A lot of people will ask, what's the best time of year to go? It really depends on what you want. If you don't mind sort of hotter, more humid, muggy weather, and the mid eighties doesn't bother you, then you might wanna go anytime between January and May. If that is too warm and you don't like humidity and you want something that's a little more like what we're having now, uh, you know, sort of early autumn days, then you might want to consider June through December. Now, the water temperature is a little colder at that time of year. So if you don't mind the cooler water, and I, as I said, I was just there in September and the snorkeling was fantastic. Snorkeling with sea rays, snorkeling with sea lions, uh, turtles, penguins, all kinds of things. So again, it really depends on, on what you're looking for. There's no bad time of year to go. And speak with your Expedia travel advisor and, and try to find out, you know, if you've got a window of opportunity, let's find out what's happening on each island at that time of year. And let's really drill down and make sure that that's a good time for you. 
Um, I talked about the expedition team before and, and how they're ornithologists and glaciologists, marine biologists. Unique to the Galapagos is that all of the expedition team have to be permanent residents of the Galapagos. So they, they're showing you their home. These are folks who live there. They are permanent residents. In many cases, their grandparents and their parents were born and raised and live in the Galapagos. So they really are showing you their backyard and they love showing you their backyard. It's a really, really casual trip. Uh, we're at the equator, so it doesn't get particularly cool in the evening. And during the day, it's really nice, moderate temperatures. So shorts and sandals and t-shirts are pretty much the order of the day. Uh, certainly when we're out exploring and, and we're moving around by Zodiac, uh, getting all over the place. Those uh, naturalists, the Galapagos National Park Service Gala uh, naturalists who are, are our expedition team, they're the ones who are bringing it to life. So we go out in small groups of eight to 10 people per guide, and the guide is describing everything and explaining it and bringing it to life for us, talking about the wildlife, talking about the marine life, talking about the volcanic nature of the islands, everything you can imagine. And then each one of them has a specialty and each one of them will give a lecture at one point during the cruise. So we explore on foot, we explore by Zodiac, and we also explore by sea kayak. So a number of opportunities over the course of the cruise, I believe five different opportunities on each of those two itineraries, um, at which point you can get in a kayak and go and explore. And I had the most incredible experience a couple of weeks ago where for some reason, the 2.30 time slot was full, I couldn't go. So I looked at the four, I went back down at four, nobody was signed up for the four o'clock time slot. They gave me my own solo kayak, and one of the, the guides followed me in a Zodiac just from a safety perspective, but I was kayaking by myself, and about 20 or 25 spotted eagle rays were in the water with me, and I, I, if I dipped too far with my paddle, I'm sure I would have hit them, um, and it was turquoise blue water like this. It was absolutely spectacular, so there are some amazing opportunities. It's the only place in the world where you can snorkel with sea turtles and, and uh, penguins, Galapagos penguins. The snorkeling is phenomenal. Again, about five opportunities per uh, itinerary. We provide all the snorkeling gear. And currently with COVID protocols, we are giving you a brand new mask and snorkel. So you walk into your suite and in addition to the backpack and the water bottle that we provide, we're giving you a brand new mask and snorkel for you to take home. So we provide all the gear. An amazing destination for kids. This is my son, Alex. And we were there in 2018 when he was five. And when I told him a couple of weeks ago that I was going to the Galapagos, we only accept people that are fully vaccinated at this time. He knew that and he was rather displeased with me that I was going back to the Galapagos without him, but I couldn't take him because he's not vaccinated yet because he loved it. It's an incredible destination for kids because there's really nothing they can get into that's harmful. 97% of the Galapagos is undeveloped. So we arrive at these beaches, these pristine areas, and there are no yacht clubs, no marinas, no uh, condo developments, no hotels, no speedboats. It's just us and this beautiful pristine beach. So you take kids there and they just wander the beach and beach comb and pick things up along the way. Um, and the wildlife that we encounter know no fear of us and they know that we're not a predator of theirs. So they're not concerned and they're not gonna lash out and attack us. So it, you're fine from that perspective as well. The kids see this wildlife from a few feet away um, and there's no fear that, that uh, the wildlife is gonna harm us or hurt us. So here's our brand new ship. Um, she was ready last year in July, but obviously we couldn't sail. So she started sailing in June of this year, designed and built with the Galapagos in mind. Look at all of this glass. One of the design features was to make sure that you could look out and see the Galapagos from anywhere you are in the ship, whether it's a dining room, a lecture hall, whatever it might be. Uh, this is how we arrive. So you arrive at the marina. There, uh, there is no dock facility in the Galapagos that's large enough for any of the cruise ships. So everyone, whether it's Silver Sea or anybody else, you always arrive at the ship this way. And upon arrival in the ship, we have this area called Base Camp, which is another way to explore the Galapagos. Even when we're sailing, we've created a mini museum. 
all about the Galapagos. And that's the sort of traditional way of looking at things. Here's the modern way of looking at things. The podium that you see in the lower right-hand corner, you can pull up anything about the Galapagos. Imagine Google at sea, but specifically for the Galapagos. And you can pull up anything you want to listen to the call of a bird that you saw, listen to the whale song of a whale that you saw, um, look up anything you want, and it displays all on this massive wall-to-wall floor-to-ceiling screen. The suites are absolutely spectacular. This, this ship, everyone's been raving and raving and raving about this ship. I can't say enough about it. And just how well laid out it is. It's certainly comfortable and luxurious, but from an expedition perspective, it's laid out extremely well. Kathy talked about fireplaces on board, and this is one of the parts of the ship that I absolutely love. At the stern on deck four, we've got this open fireplace. Um, so just a wonderful place to hang around post dinner and, and have a drink and, and just sit there and enjoy. That's a very iconic uh, spot in Galapagos called Kicker Rock. All right, and moving on to Antarctica. This place is unlike anything you've ever seen in the world. I've been really fortunate in my travel career of 35 something years to have been to 74 or 70 something countries, there's nothing in the world like Galapagos. You know, you travel somewhere and you say, well, it's like this, but without the palm trees, or it's like that, but the food's better. You, we always make these comparisons and you cannot compare the Antarctica to anything else, not even to the Arctic. It's that unique. So, one of the things, one of the questions that comes up about expedition very often is, um, do I have to be a triathlete? How fit do I need to be to do this? And you can see here, this is a fairly level landing at this gravel beach where we are. So we say that if you can play around a round of golf, if you can climb a couple of flights of stairs, if you can walk the mall for a little while, you can do this. This is a wet landing. Uh, we give you all sorts of ideas of packing lists and where to get the right boots and that sort of thing. In this case, the tide's going out. So we're asking our guests to do a wet landing and then walk ashore again over this relatively flat, even surface. So if this is as much activity as you're looking for, that's fine. That's as much as you need to do because the wildlife will come to you. You're really in the middle of things. You're in the thick of, of the activity. If you're looking for something more active, of course, with all of these expedition members on board, there's always somebody who's willing to take you up and go do a hike to some really gorgeous lookout. And while we have some guests ashore because we're limited in how many people we can take ashore for uh, environmental reasons, we take the other group of guests um, Zodiac cruising. So one of our ships in Antarctica, the Silver Explorer, is 144 guests. While we have, and I'll just use round figures, while we have 70 guests ashore, and they're looking at the penguin colonies, and they're doing their hike, or they're walking along the beach, we have the other 70, eight or 10 to a Zodiac, exploring with these Zodiacs, and getting up close to the wildlife in a different way, and seeing glaciers, and seeing icebergs, all from this perspective of just being a couple of feet off the water. And it's absolutely amazing because Antarctica is teeming with wildlife, hundreds of thousands, in some cases, millions of penguins. Where there are penguins, there are leopard seals and orcas because the leopard seals and the orcas want to eat the penguins. So you can see that Zodiac cruising is a really crucial and critical part of this as well. And then for those that want a little more activity again, sea kayaking again. And just to remind you, all of the excursions that I'm talking about, all included, we're not going to ask you to reach into your pocket because you want to go sea kayaking. You're already there. We've got the sea kayaks. We're going to take you sea kayaking. And it's all included. I talked about the perspective in the Zodiac and how you're a couple feet off the water. Now you're just, you're at water level. So it's truly insane uh, and beautiful. Um, expedition in general, if those two areas don't appeal to you, think about the Indian Ocean, think about other parts of South America, um, polar regions, so in this case, the Arctic or uh, Alaska or the Russian Far East, the Kimberley Coast off of Australia, and Northern Europe, so around the British Isles, Scotland, Ireland, up into the Faroes, up into Iceland. Kathy was talking about that as well, up into Greaseland, Greece, excuse me, Greenland. Um, so just amazing destinations. Um, 
and even some closer to home. We're doing some expeditions. If you're not ready to go too far afield yet, consider the west coast of, of Canada and the U.S. and consider the east coast of, of the U.S. In this case, we're going northbound uh, from the U.S. and, and up into uh, Halifax and uh, around um, Newfoundland as well. So close to home and as far away as you can possibly imagine. We've got a wonderful blog called discover.silversea.com. So if there's something there that inspires you, give your Expedia travel advisor a call and uh, there's the whole world is your oyster. So thank you very, very much. And uh, when you do get out traveling again, it's uh, have a wonderful time. It's, it's time to get back out there again and it's safe. And I promise you. Thank you very much, Carl. I appreciate that. The silver origin looks amazing. And like you, I love the, back fireplaces that would be where I would hang out <laughs> it's stunning it's stunning yeah and who knew we were going to have open flames on a ship yeah exactly <laughs> I was thinking that when I saw them first so <laughs> um, no that's wonderful um, you had only one question but I think you answered it and uh, Sarah asked how small are the ships but I think with your fleet slide you answered that question. I hope, Sarah, that you got the, the answer that you want. If you haven't, please reach out to your travel consultant and, and uh, he or she will be able to give you all of the details about the ship that you're most interested in. Um, so again, thank you very much, Carl. Uh, like you said, travel is starting right now. It is safe to do so. People are booking for 20. 2022, 23, the space already for a lot of these um, uh, destinations are already filling up and some of your sailings are already sold out, I know. So the, the time is now to book them. A lot of, um, a lot of the suppliers, i.e. Silver Sea Cruises or Silver Sea Cruises, there's flexible booking options. So the investment for you to book now is, is uh, pretty, um, low stress at this point yeah, in time. Yeah, it's, it's protected. Yeah. And, and just quickly on, on the dates, you know, particularly holiday dates and things like that, or when kids are out of school, if you're thinking Galapagos or Antarctica, um, those are really starting to, to fill up quickly. So uh, take a look and, and give it to start to think about that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, our next presenter will be starting right away. Um, so in regards to the Silver Sea Cruises presentation, if you have any questions, please reach out to your Expedia Cruises travel consultant um, and they will be able to help you uh, plan that next wonderful Silver Sea Cruises vacation. Uh, just a reminder, um, you can see the recording, pass on the recording to any uh, friends or family. If you know that the, one of the products that you, we featured um, we are recording them so you can uh, see them on our YouTube channels. Each of the centers have one um, or your consultant can send you out a copy of the presentations from either today or the past two days as well. Um, so our next, uh, we'll do a few polls and then I will get Colin, to, Colin Price to start right away. Um, in the next three years, how many times do you plan to make, or how many trips do you plan to make up for? I think the winner is three to five. So we've missed three to five trips in the last two years. So we have lots to to plan and make up for and start traveling. So I'm going to get going with the next presentation. I see Colin Price is here. So again, I'd like to welcome everybody to our World Explorer event. Um, this is our last presentation for the evening and for the World Explorer event. Uh, just a reminder, if you're just joining us um, as well, everybody is muted. You do have control of your video, so if you want to show us your wonderful faces, great. If not, you just can shut your video off. Please use the chat feature to uh, 
ask any questions. We will address them at the end of the presentation or a moderator will answer some of your questions throughout the presentation. Um, and in, in the event that we don't get to your, your questions, please reach out to your uh, travel consultant and they will be able to assist you um, uh, tomorrow or post, post uh, presentation. So again, my name is Scarlett Hiller. I am one of the franchise partners for the Expedia Cruises office um, in Edmonton. There are six Edmonton locations participating in these events along with the West Vancouver location. Um, cruising has begun, um, travel has begun. Cruise ships are starting to sail. We've had four months of successful sailings um, in Alaska, Caribbean and Europe. And our last presentation, um, their specialty of course is the Caribbean. So all of these cruise lines are having successful um, sailings um, as well as river cruising in Europe. They have started again this summer. Cruises are operating safely with the highest health protocols and cruising by far is the safest way to travel. So um, I just want to touch base one last time about why book with Expedia Cruise with a Expedia Cruises travel consultant. Um, we offer the expertise uh, with all the different cruise lines. Um, we can offer uh, pricing. Um, you will never pay um, more booking direct. Uh, you will never pay less booking direct with the cruise line. Um, and we can offer extra amenities where the cruise lines just don't do it. Um, so booking direct or booking with us, um, you get extra ship or you can get extra shipboard credits and amenities. Plus we offer information regarding all of the, the information that you need right now regarding passports, visas, entry requirements and COVID tests and protocols. And then of course we can assist you with any emergencies that come up. And it is, you have the ability when booking with us to book your entire vacation from your air to your cruise, to your travel insurance and all of the pre and post uh, stuff, hotels and excursions as well. So we're a one-stop shop. Um, so with that said, as I mentioned before, now is the time to start planning to, to book your 2022-23 uh, travel. Now is the time, um, even though you're not ready to, you might not be ready to travel, now definitely is the time to plan. And our team of Expedia Cruises travel advisors can help you with all of that planning. So, Finally, I want you to sit back and relax and let, uh, let's talk with Colin Price as he shows us Royal Caribbean and he's going to be featuring multi-generational family cruising. And Colin is our st strategic accounts manager with Royal Caribbean. So I welcome you Colin and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Scarlett. A pleasure. Just quick uh, thumbs up. Can you hear me okay? Just double checking. Yep, awesome. Um, I was just going to start off with, I love this back image as well. When you look at the back of the ship, the after the ship, uh, for you that have cruised before, when you're looking at the after the ship, this is probably something a little bit different than your standard cruising. I also have to say, I really enjoyed the Silver Sea presentation. I think called it a fabulous job. I actually used to work on board Silver Sea in my past life, but so it was really great to see that product again, which is part of the Royal Caribbean family. Now, actually a little background about myself. So my name is Colin Price. I've been with Royal Caribbean International for six years. This is my 25th year in the cruise industry. However, my journey did start at a much younger age. That was actually, my family loved to cruise back when I was a kid and it used to be, here's a crayon, go play. Uh, times have slightly changed in those last few years, obviously, and there's so much to do on board, really for everybody. Fast forward about 35 years later, and I've got my first cruise with my son, Jackson, who's six months of age, taking him as well. We had to put the last year on hold for obvious reasons, but I can't wait to get back out there and start exploring again. 
All right, so within this short little time, I'm gonna be talking fast and kind of going over, going over a few key points. One, health and safety obviously is a very, very big concern. I'm gonna talk about our award-winning ships and what makes Royal Caribbean so special. Why do we continue to win these awards year after year after year? I'm gonna talk about the amazing destinations that we cruise to, and I'm gonna to touch on a few of our private islands, and I'm gonna bring that all together with our multi-generational cruising. Starting off with health and safety, cruising in general really is a fabulous way to vacation, but cruising in general has always been held to a higher standard than a regular kind of land vacation. For the last 20 years before COVID, you would have to um, clean your hands when you come back on with the Purell. You'd Purell your hands before you'd go into the buffet station. It's like the rest of the world is kind of caught up to what our minimum standards were. So there's a lot of pre-testing. We do PCR testing uh, at the end of the cruise now. So before you are flying home, we arrange that the last day of your cruise. So, or if you need an antigen test, that's the name we're looking for the PCR test. We have changed the mustard drill. We were already working on this before COVID. And this was uh, for you that haven't cruised before that first day of the cruise, you have to kind of line up just in case of an emergency, you knew where to go, what to do. Back in the day, you used to have to go out there with a life jacket on there. We were already looking at how we could change it. We could go to a lounge, just get checked off. Now you can do this from your smart device, your tablet, your phone, while you're doing your check-in on the dock. So you can actually go ahead and do your mustard drill. So you're not having to line up come that time at four o'clock, just making that whole much, that process uh, that much easier. We have open sources. So we are actually giving this to other cruise lines to embrace to use this technology as well. Obviously, we're doing a lot with the rooms and sanitization and making sure that we are using a uh, hospital grade across the board as well. Now, we are actually 50 years of cruising now, and I love this little image because you can see the aft of our one of our first ships and next to compared to what our newest ship looks like. And you can just see the growth, but I'm going to take you on a little tour inside what that actually looks like. Now, we really have evolved over that last 50 years. and the one thing that remains consistent across the board with the Royal Caribbean National brand is we are quality meets energy. You're going to see that time and time and time again uh, throughout all of this. Now, I have a lot of different ships of all different sizes. Today, I'm going to be really talking just about a couple of them and highlighting them in this particular time. First off is our newest class of ships, the Quantum class. These are billion dollar ships. That was billion. And so these ships are absolutely spectacular. So we have the Quantum Anthem Ovation Spectrum and the newest to our family is the Odyssey. She's a Quantum Plus ship. And I'll talk about what that actually little plus means as well. I love the little elephant in the room as well. You can see North Star that actually takes you all the way up in the air, hangs you off the side of the ship. We are cruising out of New York past the Statue of Liberty. This will put you nose to nose with the Statue of Liberty. So amazing perspective that it gives. A lot of firsts at sea as well. And that's what I love with Royal Caribbean, really being that pioneer leader of innovation as well. These activities that you see on board are complimentary. There is no extra charge to try. If you want to try skydiving, but you don't want to jump out of a perfectly fine airplane, I gotcha. We have skydiving at sea for you here. We've actually, we looked in, we have a basketball court traditionally or outside, and we found that in the daytime or in the evening, that space sits empty or on a rainy day, that space sits empty. Now, I don't know about you, but I have no care to play basketball on my cruise, okay? So in the daytime, what we've done is we've moved the basketball court indoors, but it's transformed throughout the day. So when it's not a basketball port, or it can be bumper cars or a roller skating rink or a pride party. And I'll tell you, the funny thing is who you think is actually on those on those bumper cars. It's not who you're guessing. It's 65 plus is the average age on those bumper cars in the night. So um, and actually what we've done on the Quantum Plus on the Odyssey is we've added a really cool sports bar up above. And again, this kind of all brings together because we can use this venue as another like party event as well. So if you want to do your own private party or pickleball or something like that, you can use this space as well. So from the ripcord by I fly, the skydiving at sea. I think actually in Calgary, off the top of my head, there is one of those in Calgary, and I believe it's about $140 for 60 seconds versus complimentary on board our Royal Caribbean ships as well. A couple, obviously, we have a really unique restaurants as well from Lake Beast uh, Wonderland. That's the Alice in Wonderland, Mad Hatter kind of concept to more of that family style sharing with like the Jamie Oliver's Italian kitchen. We have different steakhouses and Japanese, you name that kind of restaurant, we have it on board. I love this one particular lounge. 
this lounge cost more money than the first two Royal Caribbean ships combined. Literally transformed throughout the day. Nice little bakery around the corner, but in the evening, we use these 8K projectors against that glass to animate it. And I'm going to go back one slide for a second. You see those gold rings at the top. Because we don't have a backstage, the performers come out of the ceiling or where that little planter is, and they pop it, and all of a sudden, boom, you are in the show. It is really quite spectacular. Now, moving over to our Oasis class. These are the largest cruise ships in the world. They are absolutely spectacular. These are, are actually my favorite ships, I have to say. I'm a huge fan of this. And we actually have a fifth that is just com is coming out next summer, the Wonder of the Seas. She's going to be doing Mediterranean cruises. The way that these ships are so different is that traditionally, most ships on average, your showroom is at the front and your dining room is at the back. And if we were to say in a ship that has, I don't know, 1500 people on it. Generally, the six the people that are going to the six o'clock dinner would go to an eight o'clock show. The people that went to an eight o'clock dinner would go to a 10 o'clock show. And traditionally what happens is one, as the dining gets out of one and the entertainment gets out of the other, most people are kind of passing each other. And that's where that kind of little bit of a crowd hits. But what's really cool with the, with the Oasis class is because we have different venues around, we have different dining rooms around, we have different shows happening at different times, and we have all different floors. So you're not getting that congestion like you might on maybe a mid-sized ship. So I'm gonna take you through this neighborhood concept because what I might be in the mood for is gonna be very different than maybe what Liz is in the mood for and maybe what Scarlett might be in the mood for. So take, taking off, taking a little tour over at the Adult Solarium area. So in the daytime, a great place to hang out. The sea days are fabulous up here as well. You would think where there's seating for about 250 people on a given day, it's probably 40, maybe 50 people sitting up here. But again, this is an adult only solarium area. There's a great little restaurant tucked over there. You can bring children to the restaurant. It is a healthier cuisine restaurant choice as well, um, but great. And then in the evening, um, it's usually pretty quiet here. Usually once or twice a cruise will actually use this as like a nightclub venue as well. So that we've kind of, we've kind of got that open air, but then also still kind of closed off in certain areas as well. Now, as I kind of move us from the front of the ship, I'm going to take us to the other side of the ship where all like the pool and sport zone is as well. So we have the flow rider that's the surfing at sea, but if you don't want to try surfing, you can try the boogie board, or maybe you just want to people watch. Maybe you want to watch your grandkids doing or your kids doing it, or, um, but there's a lot of people out there. I like to go out there uh, first thing in the morning before anybody else is out there. And it's a great way to have that space. We have multiple pools around the ship. So it's not like we had to have one in the center. We have multiple swimming pools uh, that you're going to find located around. I actually love this image of this lady standing here because you can see two of the pools offhand. So you'll notice right next to each of those pools, the lifeguard standing there as well. Actually, on our private island, perfect day, there's over 100 lifeguards that actually live on the island as well. So, of course, we take safety as priority number one. Kids have their own little pool, splash away bay zone area. There's mini golf, there's um, zip lining. We have rock climbing. I mentioned about the surfing. These are all complimentary activities for you on board. Now, again, if this is not your forte, you're like, I don't want to do that. I want my quiet spot. That's okay. We've got that for you. Come down to Central Park. I love Central Park. There's over 14,000 trees and plants as you walk through this area. In the evening, it just kind of got that romantic feel to it where you can hear the birds chirping. I remember one evening sitting out there and there's three cello players playing Phantom in the opera and it was just so nice to just sit and relax and to have my quiet spot. There's some fabulous restaurants located down this area. There's a little wine bar that is, I don't know why it's never busy, but you can, I can guarantee you will always find a, a seat and a glass of wine ready to go for you there as well. Now, directly below uh, Central Park is our promenade area. So I'm going to make a little mental note of that little glass dome that you kind of see there, because that's actually a little bar that you can walk into. And as you're sitting there, I'm going to show you where that would actually come to. It'll take you down into the heart of our ship, into the promenade area. And along the promenade, it's got all these amazing little gift shops. There's a little Irish pub. There's a Latin dance club. And then this is the rising tide bar that would take you from uh, the promenade deck all the way up into the Central Park. So it's a moving bar. So you'd basically sit down, they kind of close the gate behind us. The bartender would drive us on up to, uh, up to that next level. It's about 15 minutes as you sit there, but it's really cool because your atmosphere is changing around you as you're sitting there. There's all of a sudden you can see there's a um, piano bar. And then before you know it, we're all the way up into Central Park. And if you decide to go for a walk there, you can, or you stay on, whatever you may want to do. 
little pizzerias, little cafes, Starbucks, again, all located down in the Royal Promenade. And then we also have, of course, the karaoke. Uh, it's funny, as soon as you get onto a ship, it seems everybody's a karaoke star. This is always a popular area in the evenings as well. So that's kind of taking you through four of the neighborhoods already. I'm gonna take you a little bit further and you're kind of probably curious, where are all the kids at a time like this as well? Well, I'll show you where we lock them up. I mean, where we keep them here. <laughs> all right, just, oh, you know what? I forgot, I wanted to show the entertainment boulevard first. Uh, so first off, where all the entertainment is, the ice rinks, you're gonna be on the largest cruise ship in the world with the world's smallest Zamboni. Really quite cool. One of the neatest shows. It's amazing to see them being able to do backflips and all these neat little tricks here as well. I really do recommend it. So one night you may be seeing the real Broadway production show. One night you're going to see the ice skating show. Maybe you're going to go over to the jazz club. Again, there's all this amazing entertainment. Now, the one big difference with our award-winning shows that we have on board is that we actually do more Broadway production shows a year than Broadway does. So this way, you're not seeing 30 seconds of one show and 30 seconds of another show. It's a real Broadway production show. Shows like Cats, Mamma Mia, Hairspray, the full Broadway production show. And it is complimentary included there where you would pay easily about $150 or so to see something like that in New York. Now, the Kids Club, we break down the kids into all different age groups. One of the big things to know is that all of our, um, our um, Camp counselors all have a minimum of a four-year university degree background in child care. So we're not just hiring Joe Smith off the road to come look and take care of your children. You know, we've got great minds that are uh, looking after your kids as well and tons of amazing activities to do on board from science classes to cooking classes to painting classes. They've got, you saw the other activities around the ship that they will have access to as well. So they're going to be keeping very, very busy with lots to do for them. So you see that we broke it down to all different age groups. So you don't have a bunch of 10 year olds in with a bunch of 14 or a bunch of 14 year olds in with a bunch of 17 year olds. They are getting their vacation and you're getting your vacation. It's really a win win. And then, of course, everybody usually comes together at dinner and during our floor excursions as well. Or if you decide to walk off in port and do your own thing. A lot of the younger families I find kind of orientate to the after the ship. And this is kind of that Coney Island experience along the boardwalk. Really cool. This really neat carousel like that spins you around there. There's a Mexican restaurant. On the Symphony and Oasis, there's actually a really neat sports bar that kind of opens up. And then those two giant purple things that you see there, that's the ultimate abyss. It's a dry slide that takes you all the way from deck 16 down to deck six. It's about a eight second drop. It is an absolute blast. It's a lot of fun. The dry slide, you just sit on a mat and away you go. Now I'm gonna take you all the way down to the after this area to have a little bit of a, a closer look as well. So this is the aqua theater. It's basically this outdoor theater where we have these Olympic divers diving into this tiny little pool here. It is really amazing. So now you've got the Broadway theater show at the front. You've got the aqua theater in the back. You've got the ice rink in the middle. You have endless entertainment. You can, before your cruise, you can go onto your Royal Caribbean app and you can pick what shows you wanna see on what night and correspond it with your dinner to kind of make your vacation experience kind of smooth and simple when you're on board. Now, if you decide you want to skip a show, not a problem. Just don't show up. Just you can do whatever you want to do. Now, what I love is the seats up in this corner here. These are the aqua theater seats. This is as VIP as you can get. We have one and two bedroom aqua theater style rooms. If you get the two bedroom aqua theater room, it's full butler service. It's your royal genie. It includes absolutely everything from your gratuity, specialty dining, you name it, it's included. Look at that. That Miranda is stunning. Again, you've got that wraparound patio, big, beautiful living room as well. So this is one of my favorite suites. Just gonna touch on a few of our older class ships. These are our ones that we recently reamped. We spent over close to $250 million per ship, taking these ships kind of to that next level, kind of sprucing up, kind of really designed for that short cruise experience. But the one ship I really wanna showcase here is the Navigator of the Seas. The Navigator of the Seas is actually gonna be cruising out of LA. And so a little bit closer to home, we haven't cruised out of LA in over 10 years. So we're going to be doing round trip cruises from three, four day, five and seven night cruises, round trip LA, navigator of the seas. Ship looks absolutely stunning. So really great for that um, either Vegas cruising stay, whatever kind of vacation you're looking for, that navigator will check the box. Ships over in the future, the next five years, you can see we've got all of these ships coming out. Wonder of the Seas is the next, it's $1.5 billion. So we continue to invest to make sure that we are bringing you the best product that we possibly can. As you can see, I am in one of our suites right now. 
and just kind of showing you uh, what a couple of our suites look like as well. So again, we've got our regular insides, we've got inside staterooms with virtual balconies, and then we've got our royal loft suite like I'm in. But then we wanted to see how can we make the ultimate family suite. So we took the suite I'm in and redesigned it with like a slide in the room, double bunk beds for the kids in there, while still the parents can have their own room as well with a TV that pops out of the ceiling, three bathrooms. So you've got your own dedicated one, the kids have their own. It is spectacular. So that's called the ultimate family suite, something to check out as well. Now we do cruise roughly to over 300 destinations around the world, uh, six continents, 30 home ports. I'm going to talk about all 300 of them right now in the next minute and a half. Does that sound good? Charlotte's like, good luck. <laughs> all right. So again, we cruise all around the world. Your team at Expedia can happily tell you more about tell you more about them. I did want to just highlight the Barbados itinerary, seven nights, seven ports. This has been an extremely popular itinerary that I've seen for the Canadian market as well. And the last few kind of things just to touch on is a couple of our private islands. First off, Labadee in Haiti. This used to be the first original, I think, the chill and thrill, where we have a couple, um, like the zip lining over the bay, roller coasters throughout the jungle. Uh, but if that's not your jam, you're like, I just want to sit and flop and relax. We got you. You can do that as well. So it's all set there. Now, take that. Well, actually, one thing I'm just going to showcase on there as well. When I was back on Labadee, you noticed that it had a real dock. That was one of the biggest things what made Labadee so special. The fact that we could dock and you could walk off the ship. Some of the other private islands out there, like Coco Cay, did not have a dock. And therefore, if the weather was rough, it was unsafe for us, we would have to go to another port. So we reinvested into Coco Cay, rebranding it as the perfect day, spending over $250 million. And the biggest thing that we did right off the bat, adding a real dock. Now, this takes the thrill and chill to a whole other level. Uh, so if you're looking for to relax, you can do that here. If you're looking for that real thrill, we have it. So just a quick walk through a perfect day. We have the largest freshwater pool in all of the Caribbean. The kids would love this area. The adults will love this area. If you want a little bit more of a relaxing area while the kids are over at the Thrill Water Park, you can head over to the Cocoa Beach Club. This is where you're going to find our overwater bungalows. Really great relaxing area, kind of elevating your private island experience to that next level. So. I don't know about you, but I could definitely see myself in one of those overwater bungalows for the afternoon. So as I flip over to the Thrill Water Park, that is the tallest water slide in all of North America. Now I'm not a water slide park guy myself until I went down that thing and I had a blast. It was an absolute hoot. You've got zip lining around the island, up, up and away. This hot air balloon ride that gives you a beautiful view. And then you can just see how large this water park is with over 13 different water slides. It is phenomenal. So again, there's a lot to do. Now, as our travel all changes for all of us of our different styles of what we all might be in the mood for, like I said, I know Liz is all about the thrill and Scarlett's over there and she wants to relax. But myself, my vacation experience is changing again. So I'm probably going to be heading over towards this uh, um, wave pool. And now with my little three-year-old Jackson, we are going to be heading to the pirate ship, shooting water cannons, playing on that in that little slide. So that's where my watch of playing will be roping grandma and grandpa into this while I'm at that swim up bar. It's fun what I'm going to be doing. But uh, either way, this is how I can see now would be my perfect day as well. Lots of restaurants located around the ship. Don't worry, around the island, you won't go hungry. Just to wrap up the final last little bit, right now we do have a 30% off promotion for all guests up to a a bonus $150 um, instant savings as well. We have a special bonus offer as well, especially dining for two. So one of those restaurants like Wonderland, you could have that included as well as a soda package. And if you are traveling, uh, sometimes um, if maybe you're a group of four, we actually have these additional like onboard credits. Now, one thing I did want to just spend one extra minute talking about Scarlett had actually mentioned at the very beginning that quite often you will find a better price when you're booking with Expedia Cruises versus if you were to call Royal Caribbean directly. And I really wanted to highlight how true that really is. I was actually just talking with a few of the offices this morning. We were looking at a report and there was multiple cruises that were over 60% less than what we are selling it for at Royal Caribbean. There is phenomenal discount. So that 60% they have, they have is actually better than that 30% off that you're seeing here. So if you ever find that there's a deal uh, that they, they don't have that amazing price advantage, that's where this $100 extra bonus will come into place for you as well. But there are hundreds of room categories that have these price advantages. 
The only catch is there's only so many rooms on each of these ships that they have. So you need to book further in advance to lock that down. And I can guarantee you, you're not going to see a savings like that. Uh, so make sure to call your Expedia cruise ship team because they can tell you all about it. There's phenomenal savings. And uh, I just want to say thank you so much. We do have our cruise confidence extended a little bit longer. Uh, and I just wanted to kind of touch on that we went over health and safety, our award-winning ships. We talked about over 300 destinations, our two private islands, and again, all of the multiple awards that we win year after year after year, 18 consecutive years of best cruise line in the Caribbean, uh, best cruise line for private island, and best cruise line for entertainment. So thank you so much for taking the time to listen with me. It's a pleasure working with a team with Expedia. They really are the dream team. So thank you for your time tonight. Thank you very much, Colin. Your presentation was great as always. Um, my uh, goal would be the, the Splash Speedway. I would like to try that. But as you can see, and as Colin highlighted, there are so many activities for the entire family, both on board one of their amazing ships and that perfect day at Coco Cay. So, there's something for everyone. Again, Colin, I wanna thank you and I wanna thank everybody for joining us. Um, now is the time to start planning uh, and thinking about your next travel. Our Expedia Cruises advisors are here to help. Um, just reach out to them. Um, again, I thank you for joining us. We appreciate your time, your past travels with us and we look forward to helping you plan your future trips as well. Um, and I would like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving uh, as well. So good night, everybody. Um, and thank you.